that dovetails by hand. One is they're aesthetically good to look at. Another reason that hand cut dovetails makes a strong and efficient joint. Another reason that uh, I think that hand cutting dovetails is important is to develop your accuracy skills in woodworking. Many times we think accuracy only belongs to machine metalworking, but uh, it belongs to woodworking as well, and we need to do things that develop our, our woodworking accuracy. There are two parts to hand cut dovetails. There are the tails and there are the pins. Generally there is a debate as to well, which do I cut first, the tails or the pins. You can do either. I have found that if I cut the tails first, it makes it easier, as we will see later, to lay out the pins. Another thing that you need to uh, remember in hand cutting dovetails is the drawer side needs to be out of a softer wood than the drawer front. The reason for this is when you compress the side, the tails into the pins, that they will compress a little bit and make a, a tight joint. Normally, uh, the, the size, the softer wood, is generally accepted to, to be cut at about uh, eight degree angle, the same bolt right here. On harder woods, it is recommended about a six degree angle. I personally prefer even a greater angle for hardwoods. I like to get into to use about a 10, 12, maybe even a 14 degree angle. It just looks better. Let's take a look at the few few tools needed to, to hand cut dovetails. One is a mallet. Also a T bevel is quite useful. A marking gauge. You will need knives. It may be an X-Acto knife or a chip carving knife or um, a knife to, to scribe your edges with, which we will discuss later. A pencil. You will need chisels. Normally a half inch chisel, a quarter inch chisel, and a small quarter inch chisel with the sides ground to a slight bevel, which we will, the reason for which we will explain a little bit later. And a saw. Uh, they make specialty saws such as a, a dovetail saw, which saws a really nice straight, straight curve. We will, for this demonstration, we'll be, we will be using a Japanese saw. So you see there's very few tools required to actually perform the operation of cutting hand cut dovetails. There are two types of dovetails. One being the half blind dovetail, as I have here, which is commonly used for drawer construction. The other is the through type dovetail, commonly used for carcass construction. To begin the laying out of the dovetails, we use the marking gauge first. The, this marking gauge has a knife point that slices the scribe line as opposed to scraping the, side, the scribe line. And this is what I, I recommend. We mentioned earlier that the drawer side is a little thinner than the front. The drawer front in this case is 7 eighths. The drawer side is 11 sixteenths. It makes it convenient because that only requires you to, to make one setting on your marking gauge as you will see here in just a moment. So the first thing to do is to, to uh, set the, the scribe point exactly the same width as your drawer side. And uh, we need to be very precise with it. Okay, once that is accomplished, now we're ready to scribe both sides of the drawer side. I 
I'll make a scribe line on the edge also that we'll, the reasons for which we will see a little bit lighter. But once we have the drawer side scribed, now we need to scribe the drawer front, the back of the drawer front. And you see the knife edge on the, uh, the point makes a nice clean cut. That's opposed to a point that scrapes which pulls the fiber. But this makes a nice place to, to put your chisel in later when you work to that line. And we also need to make a, make a scribe line with a marking gauge across the front of the drawer. Working from the back side, so now then we have the, all of our scribe lines that we need to make with the marking gauge. Now the next step is to lay out the, the tails. And a point we might want to make at this time is why do we call these the tails? Some people think that that may look like a dove tail. And as I said earlier, these are referred to as pins. I prefer to lay out and cut the tails first because I can lay out the pins more accurately from tails rather than vice versa. Other, other, um, someone else may prefer the other method, which either method is acceptable. So to finish the, the layout of our tails, to establish this angle, we could use the bevel gauge, or we can use a manufactured template that, are, that can be purchased from two companies. The next point that I would like to make is rather than using a pencil to scribe our lines, I'm going to use a knife. This is a, happens to be a chip carbon knife which works excellent for me. They lay out to some extent is done by eye. The first, the first uh, mark that you make, make it lightly. Because if you try to, to make too heavy a mark first, the grain may pull the mark off. This is, needs to be a very clean and well-defined line. And that's one reason we use a knife. Just very lightly. Then as we go, make it a little heavier. Now the, we're going to make one pin in the middle for the sake of this demonstration. So... <clears throat> We simply locate the middle of our drawer. This drawer is five inches wide. Now from, from that mark, we can lay out the middle pin. At this time, we want to select what size we want to make our pin. Do we want it real narrow at the bottom or a little wider? So that's a personal choice. We're going to make one that's not so narrow. Okay, after I lay out the tails with the knife, I want to, well, I want to scribe a, a line across the end of the drawer front to use as a guide. So since I'm not going to be using this um, as a line to work up to, I'm going to use a pencil. And on the template, the back side of the template, the front side has the angle of your dovetail. On the back side, it uses square. If you don't have this, you can use any square that you have, such as this small combination square. And I, I'm, 
I'm marking, making these, line, these lines here with a pencil just to give me a, um, a guide for sawing. <clears throat> now, as I stated before, you can purchase dovetail saws. Um, we saw a really fine, curved, soft, straight. But you can do this, accomplish the same thing with a Japanese saw, which works on the pull stroke. That, you know, adequate, is, you have to a little bit of a hard time keeping it straight because of the na very narrow kerf that's in the setting of the teeth. Do this as accurately as possible, but bear in mind that you're not working to any any pins yet. You're, you're making the first piece, so you have the the next. When we make our pins, we will have to be very accurate with what we do. Saw down to the line. me from making mistakes and removing the wrong part of the tails. <clears throat> the next step we want to do is, is saw this out. It could be chiseled out. You could take a chisel and chisel this out, but I think that uh, with the modern day tools that we have today that uh, you're probably like, like I am. I take advantage of of all the tools that I can. So let's go to the scroll saw and saw these out. As we begin sawing, an important point to make here is we're not going to saw right on the line. We're going to saw off the line and later we're going to chisel up to the line, use a chisel. That, that, that's what I call creeping up to the line and this just makes, uh, allows for accuracy. cutting the tails with a chisel. Now a point that I want to make with the chisel is since the chisel has a wedged edge that as you enter the wood it has a tendency to, to, to wedge itself against the back side of the blade. Therefore we need to take very shallow paring cuts so we can uh, be accurate to the uh, scribe line that we have laid out. This is the time that uh, you really want to be accurate. I use a mallet, but I don't tap the chisel very hard. You don't need to. Uh, the heart, if you, if you do, you're going to break off the little birds that's on the, the edge of the chisel. You also want to lean your chisel uh, towards the front of the drawer side to make a slight, ever so slight 
um, cut towards the back. Just go down just a little ways. Now then we can lay the chisel in the scribe line very accurately, lean the, tilt the chisel forward a little bit, and just give it a top or two. Use the back of the chisel to line itself with the groove. On the edge, just make a slight, slight cut with the chisel. We'll finish those from, from a different a different cut later. Also, I want to make a point that you need a way to clamp this down solid on the work surface. Uh, and the ideal way is on your workbench to use a device as of this. I find this very convenient to use for this purpose. Now we did one side, now we're going to do the other side, but this time we're going to go and meet the other mark that we just made. So let's take part of the, remove part of the wood. Now let's take a, take a final cut. Let's work both. Way across the cut. Let's, let's now just work it down until we meet the cut that we started on the back side. That that is allowed us to come up very accurately to the line that we scribed with the marking gauge. Now let's finish the the uh, cutting the tails and let's cut these outer edges. So. Here again, we want to use the scribe line that we made. This time we chisel very vertical, just very, very lightly. You could almost do this without the mallet, but if you use a, the mallet very lightly, it's with acceptable results. We have just completed the first step in making dovetails by first cutting the tails on the drawer side. Now we will then proceed to lay out the pins on the drawer front. The pins. The drawer will go together in this fashion, this being the inside of the drawer front. So we, we have the, the line scribed, which is equal to the thickness of our drawer side. We want to place this in our vise with the inside of the drawer facing away from you. Clamp it in your vise with it standing proud slightly. Now then place the drawer side very accurately over the uh, end of the drawer front. It's, clamp it down where it will, will stay in place. And now then once again we're going to use the knife describe the the outline for the for the pins. Once you have uh, finished scribing the outline of the tails onto to the front of the the uh, front edge of the drawer, then we can Remove it from the vise and uh, continue the marking. I'm going to finish the layout of the pins by scribing a line of 90 degrees on the back edge down to my scribe line, which equals to the thickness of the drawer side. 
this just lays out the uh, profile of the pin down to the to the line that I have scribed across the drawer front that is equal to the thickness of the drawer side. This gives me a nice clean line of which to work to with a chisel later. Once again, it's, it's good to take a pencil and uh, mark the wood that you're going to need to remove. Now the next step is to finish the, uh, where we begin actually cutting the pins. And we do that by, by with a saw. Now at the point that I want to make at this time, we, we're not going to saw right on the line. We're going to stay off the line approximately a uh, 30 second or less. Very carefully. We saw down to our stripe lines. And stop. to remove a uh, majority of the waste. substantial manner where it's comfortable to you. And um, again, we're going to work up to the line. We're not going to work go to the line first. Stay about a thirty second off the line. chisel in this line that I scribe. I'm going to tilt the chisel forward ever so slightly, just a degree or so. And use that cut to line the next cut up with the back of my chisel. 
And by doing this, you can make very precise cuts with the chisel. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I took a uh, quarter inch chisel and ground the sides back at uh, the bevel of the sides back so I could allow me to get right in the corner without uh, uh, disturbing the, uh, so I believe the clean edge. Another point I need to make is uh, select, for your drawer front, select straight grain wood. Otherwise, any kind of uh, grain that's uh, slightly, what I call slightly squirrely, uh, makes it difficult to, to uh, get a good straight cut with your chisel. I'm still staying away from the line about a 30 second. Last cut to be a very thin paring cut. Lay the chisel in the scribe line, lean it forward. work from this direction. Just staying off of the scrap because I want to uh, just work up to the line as I go.
Using the scribe line that we did, that we uh, made earlier to guide my chisel. finish working to our line we need to be very exact at this point if we're going to have nice tight fitting dovetails. to uh, examine what you have just done to be sure that you've got all the wood removed that your corners are nice and clean sure that uh, all your surfaces are straight and parallel. Now's the time for the test to see if how accurate your work is. Now, <clears throat> when you insert this, you want it to be able to press it in rather than hammer it in. So, job complete.